do. We'll do this one. I don't even know what this one sounds like. Uh, to be a Fighter's Pass DLC that has 50 tracks in it. Alright, so... Actually, Joker really caught my eye, so... Yeah, that's Persona 4. Wait a minute. I might have just realized something. So... It had to deal out all the alts, eh? So basically, Persona 2, Persona 3, Persona 4, Persona 5, and 6. And since we don't have uh, 6, 7, or 8 yet, it, those are just uh, colors of the other alts. Anyways, that's really interesting. <laughs> That the alts are laid out like that. Anyways, 3B KGS is the arena ID. With all that said and done... Right, is... Did I save the command? Yeah, okay. I did. Cool beams. So... Wow, my mic will really pick up some sound. Um, I guess I'll just move it closer and then turn down the volume. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Man, ever since the uh, character experiment ended, it's actually a bit of a challenge to choose who I would play first in the stream. But I guess since I used to play Joker, like since he came out, up until Bialf came out, I just... I just had a Joker along with my other mains. A Wii Fit Trainer, Robin, and Yoshi. So, yeah. That's a bit of Tech Whipper history right there. Tech Whipper lore, if you will. Hey, welcome to the stream, Leap260. It is an open arena, so feel free to join. Oh yeah, he did say hello there. General Kenobi! <laughs> Anyways, I had a feeling that it was warranted. Anyways, we got Joker vs. Steve. Maybe Final Destination? You know that. Okay, whatever works. Ever since trying to get to Fox into Elite Smash, I had a. I thought Joker would play more like Fox here, but. Uh oh. Okay, we're good. Oh, 
juked me with a lack of an anvil there. The down smash takes out two weaknesses. Safer stock. Hey, welcome to the stream, Das Florico. Oh, frick. Fortunately, we got some other here, traps planned here. Right whenever I got our send too. And here I thought, let's see, we just didn't have any diamond there. Ah, stole the words right out of my mouth. Anyways, we this goes on to stay in the arena for a bit longer. It's basically what I say whenever someone wins. You don't get kicked from the arena if you lose. Obviously. Anyways, we this goes on to face off against Florico up next. With the Steve versus Isabel matchup. Absolutely did not see the Isabel coming. Anyways, here's to a good match. Isabel maybe at a slighter disadvantage considering her close range isn't, well, that great, honestly. Well, her block breaking ability isn't that great anyways. But I suppose she could do what she could. Well, do what she can anyways. Oh, unfortunate that see, it had to go out like that. But I suppose an upside Isabel does have in this matchup is that see, Steve's close range is about as see, big as see, Isabel's, so I suppose Florico could rest easily here, but not too easily. Still got a Steve to fight. Oh, the minecart exploded. When did Steve get that advanced? Yeah, Isabella do be a pretty decent at the ledge trapping thing. Just need to place the Lloyd at roll distance from the ledge, and yeah, that should be a perfectly well set of trap there. And Florico is ahead thanks to the self destruct that we just had at the start of the match. And it seems uh, to the Lloyd, maybe Florgo's best friend whenever it comes to dealing with my cards. Well, okay, I'll alongside just uh, using the pocket. Anyways, we this is starting to make a comeback here. Sixty-two percent off of one interaction. That just seems like the norm for a lot of ultimate characters. 
TNT explodes, but that doesn't take out Flurry Code just yet. Nice tech on Flurry Code's part. So we best do be like one really strong hit away from when they winning the game. Or just strong hit in general. Up throw doesn't quite do it, but it got really close to. But yeah, it looks like in order to win this one, Varko would need to hit chip away at his Steve bit by bit, and that would have won in the game. But as it stands, Weebus is staying in the arena for a bit longer. Oh wow, that's a lot of people to come by this early on in the stream. Anyways, welcome everybody. Anyways, Weebus goes up against me up next. Alright, on to PS2 we go. Okay, whatever works. Joker just goes so far whenever he uses his gun. <clears throat> and Steve didn't really need to combo out of his up special for that up smash to hit. Anyways, Arson is now up. And the down smash takes out to weep it to the first stop. Oh gosh. I guess some people would call that to buffer's fault, honestly. Anyways, uh, Arson back here takes out Tweebus's his second stop. Uh, yeah, I'm not exactly one forward smash away from hey, eating the blast zone here. Oh, yeah, can't trouble this guard the minecart. And yeah, the TNT will take out my final stock. I suppose if I was focusing on playing a bit more defensively, then I probably would have survived at least a bit longer. But yeah, good fight. Anyways, Weebus goes up against Matt C4 up next. And judging by the username and profile icon, they're definitely not going to play Snake. Yeah, not even surprised by that. Okay. I mean, yeah, that just seemed a bit too on the nose there. So. 
Oh, the forward smash hit. Well, it didn't miss. Or it didn't hit. SMH. Okay. But yes, uh, PK Fire into forward smash takes out uh, Tweep Assist first still. Yeah, probably would have been death to Matt if that PK Thunder just followed through. But yeah, Cornell just seems like. And that's just playing a very careful and neutral game of a PK fire and all that. Which did seem to work here. And the blocks actually saved him there. But Matt had other plans. He leaves my card to it kind of helps with it getting Ness into disadvantage. Thought Ness was going to be dead there, but... See. The minecart into imagination doesn't quite work thanks to the air dodge. Rebus goes ahead and it throws out a taunt in advantage. Rebus saving upon materials too wisely. Mainly since. Well, saving upon crafting, anyways. Mainly since he's so close to getting KO'd himself. Oh man, that's. That could have been deadly there. Dash attack takes out Tweepus' second stock, but Tweepus now has access to diamond tools without any need uh, to worry about losing them between stocks. But it looks like Matt C4. Actually, Matt is gonna care about that. PK fire away! And the Diamond Forward Smash takes out Matt's second stock. There we go, that's the first Vine Boom of the entire stream. These will go off randomly every like 10 seconds to 10 minutes. Or no, not 10 minutes, uh, 20 minutes. So, yeah. And that's a dead nest right there. Weepus goes on to stay in the arena for a bit longer. And I believe they're going up against the Skull Kid profile picture up next. Yeah, go Slappy. I believe I've seen Go Slappy before. Though I forgot who they played. But again, it seems I've seen a lot of things before and forget who they played. Alright. Anyways, we got the Steve vs. Lucina. And yes, we're going on to Small Battlefield. I thought Weebus quickly built an F, and that would have been impressive if that happened in such a short amount of time. Up Smash sends his Slappy into the sky, and it looks like Weebus has a pretty good advantage going. But, gotta say, Slappy does have a pretty good fundamental game. Looks like Weebus will be getting KO'd sooner than I thought he would. And yeah, the blocks do lose out to sorties with the long-lasting moves. 
Yeah, that's for sure. Back through sends his slappy off the stage. Alright, so it appears my prediction was incorrect there. But we could be seeing Sloppy returning the favor at some point. For throw. Try to counter the minecart, but you can't counter grabs in this game. Although I have theorized the what would happen if you could counter grabs? Just having a character with a neutral special that works like a that would look like say Robin or Pac-Man's neutral special if their neutral special is a counter. Starting with the the counter only countering projectiles and then only countering the it attacks, and then finally, only countering grabs. Kind of an interesting concept. Back throws and slap you off the stage. It seems that uh, hey, Weepus has a. Uh, well, no, it seems about it. His Weepus does have a pretty good lead at the moment. Ford Smash sends Weepus off the stage, but thanks to Steve's recovery, he should be able to make it back. Not if Sloppy has anything to say about it. Powered up my card, though. Into the TNT. Good reaction timing on Slappy there. Yeah, this do be getting close, honestly. And Sloppy tried to go for a really hard roll read there. Back here. I think that might have been a misinput. But then the back here from Sloppy takes out Weavis' final stock. I've not touched my controller in a long time, apparently. But yeah, Sloppy goes on to stay in the arena for a bit longer. Going up against Florico up next. I guess we're about to see the Slappy versus. well, Lucina versus Isabel matchup. What? There was lag there? Didn't really look like it. But. Yeah, I guess if there was a lag, good chance it was it just controller input delay, in which you could probably get used to that. Just need to make hard reads and all that. Meanwhile, the type of lag that's happening between these two? Yeah, that's maybe a bit more suspect, honestly. And it looks like it's just a connection between these two that's laggy and not anyone else, so... Oh yeah, that is a worse matchup for Isabel. 
I guess Animal Crossing characters in general just don't like sorties. Only thing that the villager has going for him that Isabel doesn't is is some um, horizontal zoning pressure with uh, Lloyd in general. Well, with the Lloyd specifically. Honestly, kind of a uh, hopeful combo, just trying to combo the fishing rod into Lloyd like that. But yes, two fishing rod throws later, and four goes uh, getting a pretty a sizable lead here. Swap he just needs a good sword attack and Florico's second stop could be history. Okay, I suppose an amazing sword attack would have to do. Co trying to go for the fishing rod, jeez. And yeah, the Lloyd basically did nothing there. But Florico still does have a pretty good lead here, so. But yeah, considering that this is Isabel's worst matchup, hey, Slappy. Could make a comeback here. This is an absolutely hysterical song to have on top of a fight. Oh, I have more hysterical songs than that, honestly. But yeah, Florico, it takes a game. Also, yeah, welcome to the stream, Snapback, Snapjack, Kick Crackety Jeff. Oh gosh, that's a hard name to read. Um, I'll just call you Snapjack. But yeah, Florico goes on to stay in the arena for a bit longer. That is a correct uh, command for that. Or maybe the hymn might have been in reaction to what I said about there being more ridiculous songs out there. Anyways, yeah, I gotta remember I'm playing Joker here. It doesn't help that uh, Florico's uh, playing as uh, the exact color of Isabel that I would use. Green Isabel is kind of base, to be honest. Maybe run a pit try to rebels guard that. There you go, using the uh, Wings of Rebellion, you know. I was hoping to land on top of the Lloyd and use Rebels guard right there. But it seems that Florico keeps on ruining my chances. Ah. Fishing rod cheese. SMH. Okay.
And thanks to Town and City's uh, high ceilings. Uh, I have a feeling that... Uh, and Joker's uh, airspeed is a little too good for her trying to get Rebel's guard off of uh, the Lloyd there. Okay, so I guess Joker's down tilt in regular form is not strong enough for the Lloyd there. Anyways, Florico goes on to stay in the arena for a bit longer. It's the best matchup for Isabel! True. <laughs> There's a reason why Leo dropped Joker. Anyways, Florico goes up against Weebits up next. Ganon's the best matchup for Isabel. Okay, yeah, that might even be more true of a statement than a, a Joker being a good matchup for Isabel. But Leo still dropped Joker for a reason. But yeah, we could file that under your dumb conspiracies that it are too dumb to not be true. Anyways, Florica unintentionally setting a boost some good counterplay to Steve's my cards and all that. Somehow, Weedus was able to shield the uh, minecart completely. Also, there we go with the fishing rod cheese again. Oh wow, that was some masterful pocketing there. And yeah, I guess uh, TAT can't really be used there. Oh, probably the best way to utilize TNT as a pocket tool is if the TNT is about to explode. Then you could just uh, yeah, drop the TNT on Steve's head right whenever it does explode. Anyways, Magma Block takes out C4 kills C4 stuck. If you're new to the stream, how's everyone doing? Honestly, pretty fun stream so far. I'll say that much. Orko's doing a pretty good job of touching a lot of things that Tweebus is thrown out here. I guess that's just a uh, benefit of being a top tier, because since being a top tier, a lot of people would want to know how to beat you, and eventually they will come to beat you at some point. Top tier privileges, yeah. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, we got low tier privileges, and everyone loses to you, so no one asks how to beat you, so unless it's an emergency, so... <laughs> yeah. This is probably the perfect example of that. Oh, Foriko pocketed the mech? Pocketed the lava? Didn't even notice until that moment. Minecart from downtown doesn't quite do it.
Yeah, the Lloyd is basically a proximity mine mate for the minecarts in there. Yeah, basically, if you can reflect to the hit projectile, then it's possible to absorb the, well, to pocket the projectile. So, for instance, that yellow guy that comes out of the assist trophy every once in a while, that will ruin your day, the sheriff. Yeah, you can reflect lava. Um, okay. One... One rare case of the projectile not being pocketable, if I remember correctly. Lucario is sight special. Whenever he doesn't grab you with it, you can reflect his sight special, but I don't think you can pocket his sight special. Can't say for sure, though. But, yeah, as I was saying earlier, you... You can't reflect or pocket the bullets that the Sheriff shoots out. The Sheriff assist trophy anyways. I know, it's a real shocker. Oh, frick. Um... Yeah, well, I guess the connection do be kinda bad here. <laughs> I... Guess someone here is going to have to fix her in it. <laughs> oh frick, the lag is so bad that hey, Florico even lagged you while typing that message. <laughs> but yeah, usually whenever stuff like that happens... Yeah, okay. You're, you're turning with a hopefully better internet? Gotcha, gotcha. Anyways, Florico goes on to stay in the arena for a bit longer. Going up against me up next. Also, yeah, I forgot to say that earlier, but hey, welcome to the stream, crap apocalypse. Crap apocalypse. Yeah, okay. Also, that was probably the smoothest disconnect I've ever seen. Like, Florico did not get sent to the back of the line at all during that entire ending there. Anyways, we have Isabelle's best matchup! Although it seems I'm doing pretty good as, as far as DPS goes. Yeah, worth it! <laughs> wow, the Vine Booms do really want to come out today, it seems. Where he could done do be doing uh, pretty good here. Death match takes out for his uh, second stock. Yeah.
Fortunately, since Wily Castle do be pretty big, it will be pretty hard to kill even the lightest characters off the top here. Oh, frick. Um, okay. Um, okay, yeah. That'll be the end of that match, with Furiko taking out to my final stock. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't pocket gun. The only... In fact, the only bullets you can pocket for a mini sort of realistic gun would be Bayonetta's neutral special, and that's it, honestly. It's your favorite matchup on a battlefield. I suppose that could be true, yeah? I almost won that one. <laughs> ah well, I suppose I'll give my chance some other time. Oriko goes up against Weep, it's up next. 63% already. And as far as I know, as long as there isn't a minecart in play, Steve is able to use another minecart. So, a, a quick hypothesis would mean that if Isabel pockets his minecart, then Steve is still able to pull out another minecart. In the forward smash, uh, Florico takes out Weebus's first stop. And it looks like Weebus is about to return to favor, but I guess Florico had other plans. Using the, the grab release of Lycor to take out Florico's second stop, well, first stop. Honestly, a strategy a lot of Steve's use. I didn't even see the gyro. Well, I didn't even see the light get placed down. Florica was trying to go for a. Oh yeah, uh, shield pressure setup with the jabs and then the Lloyd right and roll distance. And the anvil takes out Florico's second stock. And it looks like the up special is the only option that Florico had there. Like, I don't imagine Steve being able to edge guard that deep, but see. Suppose see. it's good to not take that chance anyways. Anyways, the uh, water bucket takes out Weebus's see, second stock, but then Weebus immediately turns to favor. Weebus goes on to stay in the arena for a bit longer. Going up again, see Crapocalypse up next. With the Steve vs. Inkling matchup.
on to Midgar we go. And yeah, this do be like a battlefield, except Steve does have a harder time on it. I originally just placed the parallel legal stages like Unova, uh, Northern Cave, Kalos, and the others that I might have forgotten about until further notice. It just so uh, there would be a bit more stage variety while we still got some legal stages anyways. Wow, that was a nice knife actually. I didn't think for a moment that see, this would give see, players who don't like fighting Steve an advantage on stages that are entirely made of metal. Like, as you can see here, Weepus is clearly having a hard time mining here, even though he's only getting iron, gold, and diamond. It says it takes longer to mine any of those materials. Probably the best chance that Weebus has at uh, gaining materials at the same rate that he would gain materials on any other stage would be to it just upgrade to gold and then mine away from there. Theoretically, he would get a full, full inventory at that rate. Anyways, good to get a get attack from a uh, Crapocalypse. And the Diamond Backer sends the Crapocalypse off the stage. But the TNT explosion sends the Crapocalypse into the blast zone. And uh, self destruct returns the favor onto Weebus. I just realized I completely forgot to grab a snack for later. I suppose it wouldn't hurt to do it now. Anyways, I'll be right back. Anyways, I have returned. Anyways. Looks like we're at a 2-1 stop lead on Weebus' part. And it looks like Crapocalypse is purely looking for the damage at the moment. Oh, that could have been a really unfortunate there. Do you think you're a typical campy Isabel? Another streamer said it doesn't matter how you play as he equal as a equals camp. Um Honestly you do play pretty aggressively. Yeah, I've seen uh, lots more campy people. You know, like Myself, whenever I just want to time out, whenever I just want to time out someone, <laughs> and I have seen some banjos that would only run away and throw out projectiles, so I would just get the stock lead since it is on quick play after all, and then just. It tried to play keep away with the banjo. 
Yeah, honestly, there just seems to be a drive in a lot of Smash players to just to hold forward. And there's no exception to that rule, except if you don't want to hold forward all the time. Back throw doesn't quite do it. Rebus is uh, trying to provoke Cripocalypse uh, into approaching. Or something. None of those KO'd, wow. I also just realized that Weebus activated creative mode for a few moments. But you can still get KO'd in creative mode in uh, this game though. But yeah, we just just looking for some sort of either playing with his food or looking for the diamond jab like Carly Electwood. Ah, never mind. Lame. <laughs> Anyways, we just goes on to stay in the arena for a bit longer. But yeah, that's. Honestly, really funny whenever you see a kill screen on Diamond Jab, of all things. You just want a creative mode? Uh, okay, okay. Whatever works. <laughs> Anyways, going up against Weebus is Steve up next. To final destination we go. All right, I'm not biased. At least I'm not trying to use side special after hitting someone with a grappling hook anymore. So that's good. Reflect that fishing hook. Yeah, just going for the higher recovery. Forward smash from downtown? That's not quite gonna do it. Well, obviously. got the grab there. Greetings from Lieben, you out of Germany. Oh, cool. I happen to have a tiny bit of German blood in me myself. But ultimately, I'm just born and raised in America. Well, United States anyways. Because it kinda could get confusing to call your country America whenever there's entire continents called North and South America. So, yeah. Didn't even look to see if there was any iron in Weebus's inventory. Uh, 
Um. Oh, it almost looked like kid the end of that stock there. Or there. Okay. I guess that bit of trickery worked there. Anyways, we're both at. We're both at one stalk now. I should have stood a bit further away when using the gun. Because that kind of would have been good. Um, yeah, Joker's grappling hook can reach. I didn't mean to come out, but hey, whatever works. Done and done. Unlike in creative mode, he's sadly not invincible, though. Yeah, that's kind of sad, actually. Anyways, good fight. Anyways, I go up against Steve Florco up next. With the Joker versus Isabel matchup. Which I guess we joke around just saying this is Isabel's best matchup. Made it back to stage there. That's real unfortunate. Hey, that works. Okay. Now I just need to not roll behind Isabel and get forward smashed. Alright, that works. The Arson Forder takes out two floor to the second stop. All right, this works out. Looks like Forco's looking for the Lloyd into the up 
enter the up air again. But I guess the down air works as well. Anyways, Florico goes on to stay in the arena for a bit longer. And I guess I'll change characters now. We've seen a good amount of my Joker, but it looks like it's time for him to retire for the day. Unless someone writes in a character request saying, Hey, please, Joker. Just wanted to wobble. Yeah, it do be kind of a hard maneuver to pull off. Hmm. I guess the uh, next character I'll play as would be Ganondorf. Yeah, okay. I guess we'll wait until the end of this match to see the next one. So we got the Isabel versus Inkling, if I remember correctly. I didn't pay too much attention to how the... Well, to who Crapocalypse was playing just before I decided to change characters. Um... But yeah, we do be seeing Isabel versus somebody. But why commentate on that matchup, who which you know nothing about, see? And commentate a matchup which you do know more about. This is where's... Mash 6 Su Link Leaks comes in. We got to the entire Legend of Zelda series versus a single Slowpoke. Yeah. We all know that all the Pokemon can hey, beat the uh, 1 billion lions, for sure, but. This is. These are two very powerful opponents, so to speak. Actually, I don't know what a Pokes power is at all. <laughs> eh. But, yeah, safe to say the entire Legend of Zelda Spirit series it could beat up a Slowpoke easily. Although there are some other contexts that I could gather about this little hook. Like, for one, in in the Slowpoke Dojo in Ultimate, you could basically learn, well, forget any style. So... I guess there's just a chance that... Slowpuck could give the entire Legend of Zelda series amnesia. It's like... Ganondorf would forget, Oh, why am I here? Since he was originally sent as part of Demise's Wrath just to torment the Hylians for all generations, it seems. And there are very few instances where we don't see Ganondorf as the main villain in the series. Actually, what am I talking about? <laughs> Pretty sure Ganondorf's been the main villain in basically... Ev well, okay, not every game. We got see, Link's Awakening, which doesn't have Ganondorf at all, aside from a cameo appearance see, in the final boss. And I want to say the Orgos little games as well. Since if you complete see, both of the games, see, Ganondorf does get resurrected by Twin Rova. But I forget if he he is the final boss or not. Imagine Ganondorf becoming lazy. Yeah, that's what... Uh, 
That's probably what Ganondorf would do once he he destroys the Hyrule once and for all. <laughs> Go ahead. I want to know about Slowpoke again, Zelda. Frick, I don't even get that reference. But, yeah, now that that match is over, we can stop commentating Smash 6 or talking about whatever comes on my mind. We got Sora versus Isabel. Yeah, I had a feeling that had to happen at some point. This is probably... Oh, wait. I was thinking there was a bug with, uh... RNG, but it, we have seen it, the Vine Boom sound effect it happen in a shorter amount of time. So, yeah. Ganon only appears in five Legend of Zelda games? Alright. Wait, five? Oh, yeah. I guess he also doesn't make an appearance in Majora's Mask since. That's their own problem. But really, only five? Okay, so we got the Ocarina of Time. Hey, the first Legend of Zelda. The second Legend of Zelda only on the game over screen, if I remember correctly. Link's Awakening, I guess. Ocarina of Time, Twilight Princess. Wait, this is more than five. Wind Waker. Florica really hates that matchup. Yeah, I can imagine, like, Sora being a sorty and getting a really good. Well, a really high amount of active frames on each of his moves. It's like, I used to joke around saying that Sora carried, but, you know, maybe Sora might actually be carried. <laughs> Ocarina of Time, Breath of the Wild, one... Hey, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess... He also... does... Well, he also, like, tries to get resurrected in, in the Oracle games anyways. Like, there's this whole plot. Like, once you beat one of the Oracle's games, you get a password to unlock some extra content in the other one. So then you could it just it integrate more of the Hyrule stuff into it, like... Hey, Princess Zelda is it just happening to go on a visit in the other area you're helping out. And there's... Yeah. But yeah, if I remember correctly, you, it, you don't fight Ganondorf in the Oracle games. You only fight Twin Rova as a true final boss. I guess Ganondorf is just extremely prevalent thanks to the... The fact that uh, the games that he appears in happen to be the most popular games. Or the most well known, anyways. Wow, cash timing the uh, breakout of Blazaga there. That would have been death if it weren't for Florica's quick thinking and DI. But yes, the Ford Smash takes out Cash's final stock. And yeah, Florico goes on to stay in the arena for a bit longer. Going up against Juvo up next. Yeah, Juvo. 
She felt pretty good Bayonetta, I'll say that much. Oh yeah, he has appeared the most out of every villain in the Legend of Zelda series, that is true. So like we never see gear him or demise before or after Chris Gower Sword if I remember correctly. Like they're just two one and done. Even if a Minish Cap does see, happen after Skyward Sword. In the timeline, anyways. Probably the most baffling thing about the Legend of Zelda timeline is that Breath of the Wild, it, it happens in no matter what happens in the other timelines. Like, it just happens it's so long after all the other timelines are completed that it just... It doesn't matter too much. It what happened before it. <clears throat> yeah, pulled out the grenade at just the right time. I guess Juvo picked up his snake and is... It, Kicking me some real butts with him. And if Lorico finally takes out Juvo's first stock with the up air. The easy thing about that time Luna is that when Link is out to die, new ones get born. Yeah, basically like the Avatar. Well, okay, almost like the Avatar. Like, I guess the. I guess the new Link and Zelda don't immediately get born right whenever the old ones die. But. It. It could happen, yeah. Anyways, Juvel takes on Weebus up next. With a Snake vs. Steve matchup. I guess Weebus doesn't want to do that matchup. Alright, have a good rest of your day, Weebus. Anyways, we got Snake vs. Ganondorf. Yeah, that's probably going to be a fun matchup. Probably being the key word here. Anyways, on to a Hall of Bastion we go. That grabbed, yeah. There we go. Um, okay. Juve almost uh, got Gan incited there. <laughs> Yo, the 
Down special actually. He just he clanked with the up special. Well, clanked with the up smash there. Unfortunately, it seems I'm not allowed to get inside anymore. Alright, good stuff. I should probably stop making the good stuff true, or else that's gonna happen. <laughs> Okay, so the next stream will happen tomorrow at 8 o'clock a.m. U.S. Central Time. And do the... And... Yeah, these streams will almost always end at 11 o'clock of that same time zone. So, yeah. Oof, was that a typo on these nuts? Ah. Anyways, Jivo goes up against Cash up next. With a Snake vs. Sora matchup. Oh yeah, I guess it do be nighttime in Germany at the moment. There's really no... No telling why it's the, well, there's really no telling how late it is in Europe anyways. Unless I pull up a time zone thing. Fortunately, I do have Google Chrome open in case I need to change arenas. So, yeah. What time is it in Germany? Four oh six p.m. Okay, so it's not night time yet. Or like in the middle of the day. Yeah. Middle of the day, 4 p.m. What am I on? <laughs> Yo, Juvo actually edgeguarded this aura. Honestly, a pretty hard feat. Man, the way these blind booms are timed, it, it almost it seems like I'm fumbling the keyboard just to find the blind boom it, it shortcut, it just like in the old days of last week. And the up tilt into a grenade takes out Cash's second stock. And yeah, I do suppose that do be a certified lucky moment right there. And yeah, Jivo does have a pretty good advantage as far as the stocks go. Stocks and damage anyways. Oh, that was almost uh, sticky right there. It does look like Cash is about to take out Juvo's second stock here. Blazaka into the aerial sweep. Didn't even need to wait for Juvo to mash out of that one. Yeah. 
But yeah, as I stated before, Jubo does have the percentage lead at the moment. So it's maybe a uh, pretty hard to for Cash to come back at the moment. And the up smash takes out Cash's final stock. Juvo goes on to stay in the arena for a bit longer. Going up against me up next. So I think I'll change characters after this match to keep things still looking interesting. Even if my Ganondorf did almost get some good stuff off of Vigivo that last match, we all just know that Ganondorf just sucks against a good portion of the cast. Fortunately, I only used the down special in the other direction. So, yeah, I suppose that works. And the uh, back here takes out to Juba's first stock. Uh, I was about to use the down, use the down special there. Um, alright, this works. Back through. Ah, the controller didn't see quite do it though. Ah! I have a, I had a feeling I already used some high jump there. Though now that I think about it, I might have touched the ground before using the jump. Anyways, that's unfortunate. Stole the words right out of my mouth, Crepocalypse. <laughs> Anyways, gonna play as a character that does a bit better against Snake than Ganondorf anyways. Which could be literally anyone. Hmm. Um No idea, actually. Uh, we'll do Ridley. And it looks like we'll be... be watching the next match. But yeah, let's see that Bayonetta versus the Soulclock stuff.
Bayonetta has already had amnesia before, so, um, for the purpose of this safe flight, let's say she built up an immunity to it. And especially since Slowpoke is slow already, and Bayonetta has her witch time, she could just use through the witch time, make Slowpoke even slower just to go for a bit of overkill, and a uh, uh, bada bing bada boom, Slowpoke is splattered against the wall. No, I mean, fainted against the wall. Yeah, that's all I have to say about the Bayonetta vs. Soulpunk matchup, honestly. coming up. I don't really do Halloween, but I guess as some sort of taking advantage of all the sales going on, and my parents decided to just buy some candy and just keep it for themselves. I think that's how it's going down anyways. But yeah, we all know hey, what hey, Halloween leads into. That's right, November. Basically containing my favorite holiday of all time. Well, I guess aside from the, the Easter and all that. But yeah, Thanksgiving. Yeah, we get to... Here in America... Well, here in the United States, we get to be thankful for anything that would have any good thing that happened, anyways. Or just be thankful for the little things in general. And yeah, we also get the good food and all that, fellowship and all that. So, yeah. I suppose I'll charge up my laptop real quick. Yeah, alright. Man, this match is going on for a long while. Maybe Slowpoke has some sort of edge against Bayonetta that I don't know about. Maybe the fact that Slowpoke has some sort of water type move in his zip belt, that's just making all canonical witches melt anyways, like they do in uh, The Wizard of Oz. Who knows? Like Bayonetta has to mash out of the melting state in order to continue fighting and that's just giving Slowpoke some advantage. But of course... They did used to drown wizards. True. Okay. Oh, it's Snake versus Rob. Okay. Yeah, Rob does have a considerable edge against Snake compared to Inkling, that is true, yeah. Ready? Right, they did use to drown witches, yeah. Because the logic back then was... <laughs> well, if the... If the person floats, they are a witch. And if the person sinks, well... What do? Uh, 
But yeah, I suppose they do have all sorts of creative ways to execute the people they thought they were witches. And all that. Honestly, of all the things we you know, learned about in this school, hey, Salem Witch Trials, and then eventually the Red Scare, hey, kind of do be one of those things we did learn about. Oh, frick, I haven't touched my controller in a while. Cash still got hit by the Nikita, despite all that effort. Alright, Cash is sorting up a uh, Sora combo here. And it looks like we're just playing a nice game of neutral. Oh yeah, Sora's counter does have some sort of reflector on it, but ultimately all it does is keep the projectile from hitting Sora. Like I suppose Sora does sit deflect to the projectile further behind him and just increases its power. I do remember the beefy Smash dudes who just, well, whenever Sora came out, they explored the possibilities of a Sora-powered railgun, which is honestly one of the great things about the Sora DLC. I mean, yeah, it is very situational, but given the right circumstances, you could create a railgun out of Sora's. No, I suppose this sort of could... yeah. That does sound really funny. It is, honestly. Oh, unfortunate. Like, I guess you could use some um, really powerful high-hitting a projectile and just line up some Sora's to use a counter on it. And you could just have something like that. Unfortunately though, the Sora's reflector does have a cap on how much damage it's able to take. Juvo dislocated their advantage. And the uh, high explosive power from Juvo is uh, giving Cash a little bit of trouble here. And I guess Sora can be camped out whenever here the right tools are used anyways. But Sora himself can set up some hit barriers as well. So yeah, Juvo finally takes out Cash's final stock and it goes on to stay in the arena for a bit longer. I mean, yeah, it had to happen at some point, but it just took a very long time for that to happen. Anyway, suppose we should wait for Volk to get into the waiting area before we start the next match, out of common courtesy. Ready? Or I guess not. Anyways, yeah, drum dude with a goaded K rule. Versus Sujivo with the snake. Let's see how this goes. Three, 
It almost looked like Drum Dude was about to get stun locked too by the grenades there. <clears throat> Juvel almost dislocated their advantage, but it, it was still able to make it back thanks to Snake's really mobile recovery, anyways. Almost got the down air into up air though. Back throw, tried to get K roll with the box. Somehow it, it didn't happen that way. Almost got the up here, but Tujuvo just happens to not have enough big body privileges for that. And the dash attack takes out Juvo's super stock. Kirill is a pretty heavy character, so it'll be hard for Jubilo to return the favor. Me and my big mouth. Anyways. Alright, good spike from Jubilo. But fortunately... F well, not Jubilo, uh, drum dude. But fortunately, Jivo was able to make it back to stage since uh, C4 wasn't in play at the moment. Jivo almost dislocated their advantage again, and this time they paid heavily for it. And the C4 did get stuck onto Drum Dude. So Jubo goes on to stay in the arena for a bit longer. Yeah, I got a snack now. Anyways, Jubo goes up against my Ridley up next. Boogie Woogie Aphids is what I got as an as an Instagram notification. I suppose Juvo just has to bait out the space pirate rushes and it should be good. No way that actually managed to reach my up special there. Anyways, Wing Blitz takes out Juvo's first stock. Rolling behind the Juvo would have been a better option. Oh, it was the up smash that got me. Okay.
Alright. Fortunately, I did save Juvel from uh, getting KO'd by the uh, Nikita in this input. Now that looks like a jank kill screen right there. Like, posted out a conflict on Twitter and they'd be like, Yo, Snake needs to stop! But... But for those who know the context, they'd probably answer, Well, really did perform down smash, so... His loss. Anyways, Juvo goes up against two Crapocalypse up next. Meanwhile, you're gonna enjoy the ASMR's hair munching sounds on my snack here. Yeah, that's right. ASMR munching sounds. Three, two, hey, Harley Alec, how's it going? Go! We got ourselves a. Hey, Juvel here, who's got a good snake. I that's pretty good to hear. Nervous, nervous for tomorrow, though. What's happening on Friday? I... Oh, you're going to a homecoming dance with my... with your friend. Yeah, I guess uh, it's, it could be kind of nerve-wracking. It just, uh... Try not to think too hard about it. It just have some fun at homecoming. Make some good memories there. Anyway, it's an amazing neutral game from both players here. So I thought for sure the up smash would hit the apocalypse there. Oh, unfortunate SD from GFL here. But yeah, Wily Castle do be the perfect stage for Snake to set up a good amount of his stuff. I wonder if that would have been death there. On the 1st of October, you went to a home and coming with a different friend? Alright, sounds pretty good. So you got some experience under your belt. I'm playing this up like you go into homecoming DB game. <laughs> but yeah, Juvo goes up against Cash up next. After Crapoxalypse finishes choosing a character. You know, out of common courtesy. Oh, that's your crush. Okay, yeah. At that point, really try not to think too hard about see what what to do or something like that. As someone who's remained single basically his entire life, I'm not even sure that's good advice. <laughs> but um, yeah. But seeing that she's your closest female friend, maybe you could 
maybe it's a bit easier to be comfortable yeah, with her? I'm not sure. Oh, Rick, what's Cash doing? Okay, just escaping the snake's edge guard, ledge trapping stuff. Anyways, Javel got the up tilt off of the uh, cash. And these two really do have a heated rivalry going about here with each other. It all started whenever Cash just taunted Juvo after getting the KO on Juvo for the first time. And I guess they've just been at it with each other. It almost seemed like Cash was about to hey, perform a back throw on Juvo right whenever he was done rolling. But the aerial sweep takes out Juvo's his first stuff. Yeah, I guess it's not very wise to try using the aerial sweep off of the... Well, Sonic Blade off of the aerial sweep against Snake since he does have that see, frame 1 get off me option. Only assuming that the Snake uses the frame 1 get off me option at see, any point. See. Well, every time he's getting comboed anyways. It all started when we were young. He had the worst disagreement and split. Juvo and I are now in our 40s. True, yeah. Basically, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Phantom Blood, but it's good. But I guess it would make... I guess it would cause a pretty huge division in the timeline if, he, if Dio didn't kill Jonathan whenever he just got married. And also, I kind of imagine that if Dio was allowed to live in his until his C40s after putting on that steel mask, the world would probably be a bit more hectic, honestly, in JoJo's, anyways. But as it stands, the outside of the it bizarreness of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, nothing really happens in the world of JoJo's. Never seen that movement from Carol before. Just throwing the crown into the stage and then turning around as it's coming back.
I guess it has... Has some correlation to some... Mission nifty movement that Sig got discovered towards the start of the game where Carol could just his slide in and put his crown back on. Which I guess could aptly be called the Milady. Jivo taking good advantage of Kirill's big body privileges. What? No. No. That can't be right at all. Did I? I somehow got kicked out of watching the match off of one random lag spike. Ugh, that's... That's just insulting, man. <laughs> it's just a match, fortunately. Yeah, true, but that's just stupid. <laughs> Alright, sounds good. But yeah, let's see how that Bayonetta vs. Funky Kong matchup is going. So, we all know Bayonetta's strengths already, so let's just move on to Funky Kong's strengths. He does have the fastest speed of all the heavyweights in the game. Like, barely passing Donkey Kong and Bowser. Oh wait, Ridley's the fastest heavyweight. Ah. Okay, so he's the second fastest heavyweight in the game. Yeah, just being shy of Ridley's speed and all that. Yeah, he do be insane in Mario Kart Wii. So, yeah, his sight special only makes him a bit faster, so... It just right in with a flame runner and... It just wreaks some absolute havoc. Just become a very heavyweight Sonic, which sounds like an absolute nightmare, but um... I suppose that's just a necessary price, honestly. Jivo has so much input lag. Well, I'm not feeling it at the moment, actually. Maybe it's somehow you think. Yeah, it might also be a distance thing, actually. As of now, I have a pretty good advantage against Tsujubo here. Ah, me and my big mouth, I just did try to face Pirate Rush right into the uh, forward smash.
Oh, the up smash got me there. Worst overpowered smash combination, Min Min with Minato. Yeah, well, I agree right there. Also... Huh. I guess Drum Dude's never been in chat before, or maybe I'm thinking of an entirely different K rule. I'm not sure. But yeah, welcome to this uh, stream, Drum Dude. Anyways, Really Lex Random has chosen Palutena against Juvo Snake. I just purely guessed on the random. I didn't even see if he chose random or not. But yeah, Palutena does do pretty de pretty decent against Snake. Like she was a uh, top tier back whenever Ultimate was. Dude just came on it, coming out. Do be teleport recovery seat on slant on slant so. stuff. That is the actual reason why you know the Pokemon League got banned it from tournaments. Like teleport recovery seat just kept on uh, hugging the sides of the stage and they just it, they kept on flying off the edge. Anyway, he's gonna finish off the last of my water and then it, grab a new bottle of water. Good Belvita, as always. Oh, that was a nice up smash right there. And now we start to see the nair lines from Palutena. Little Mac with Steve blocks. I suppose that do be kind of interesting. Only thing he's having taken away from him would be the neutral special. He's only just able to place blocks with the neutral special now. I never really known Little Mac to have any anti airs. But yeah, let's see what Harley Like has to say about that. Hidden C4? Uh, yeah. Wait a minute! Uh oh, we got that glitch happening again. <laughs> Crapocalypse entered the match as Palutena, but now he's Mario. <laughs> Hidden counter pick of the century right there. This has only happened like three other times on these streams. 
And no doubt it's Sig gonna get clipped, just like all the other times. Alright, so quick theory, Mech might actually be worse off without his KO Punch. Like, yeah, he's better off without the Straight Punch for sure, but without the KO Punch? Kinda of bad. But yeah, his recovery would be way better, that is true. I suppose a better candidate for Steve's bulks would be someone with really good anti-airs. You know, like, uh, Steve. Oh, I did not take no impact landing into account. Yeah. Just no impact landing into max smash attacks. That'd be... that'd be busted. Anyways, and Akita takes out Crapocalypse's super stock. And considering that Crapocalypse didn't plan on Atlanta's Mario, I guess it was. I guess you could say that Crapocalypse is doing pretty good. Yeah, Crapocalypse was originally Palutena, but then the game said, No, you're going Mario! Anyways, uh, Ford Smash takes out Crapocalypse's second stock, but Juvo accidentally air dodges off the stage. The game is somehow even once again. Although Juvo does know how to rack the damage up. Actually, that probably would have been very devastating for Juvo if Crapocalypse used the cape instead of the down tilt. But then again. Hey, Juvo. Would have gotten hit and therefore been able to use uh, the cipher again, if I remember correctly. Okay, I guess you just have to get knockback in order to, well, get knockback on yourself in order to be able to use your up here again. Actually, I'm not too sure. Yo, El Shaddai has changed his profile picture to Little Buddy from Splatoon 3. Forward throw almost takes out Kripalkasolips' final stop, but then the Nikita t finishes the job. Yeah. Yep, that was a kill screen. True, yeah, you probably do need to start playing Mario. Actually, if I remember correctly, you don't need to change your character at all. You, just, you can just stay as Palutena and then the game would continue picking Mario for you. Yep, well, too late, alright. <laughs> Anyways, Juvo goes up against Drum Dude up next.
but it seems that Jibo has sort of the advantage here of uh, playing a snake. Down tilt into forward smash didn't quite do it. Drum dude tried using the up air, but see, he was hit by a parallel left foot, I suppose. Yeah. And the up tilt takes out Drum Dude's first stock. Forward smash sends the Drum Dude off the stage. And that was almost a great up tilt there. Well, up here there, but the Nikita still got Drum Dude anyway. That was almost a pretty risky e Ford special there. But the up air takes out Tsujibo's crystal. Wait, what even KO'd Drum Dude? Like, I know he got knocked. <coughs> he got knocked up by something. Okay, yeah, it was probably the grenade into the C4 that knocked him out. Anyways, Juvo goes up against my Ridley up next. Look that body, make sure you don't hurt my body. And yeah, have a good rest of your day, drum dude. Final destination, alright. Somehow I was the one who grabbed the grenade there. Forward smash from downtown. He exited because he's... Okay, for sure I saw Clover, Clover sent by in the chat before, but OBS is labeling Clover as a first time chatter. So, maybe OBS is bugged. Maybe. Just... Forgetting is some individuals see while remembering others. Okay. Yeah, using the wing blitz is a lot better of an option than using the space power to rush. Anyways, welcome back to the stream, Clover Senpai. Big body privileges. amount of spaghetti in it, that interaction there. Hey. 
You know. <laughs> it's always the final stock that see, I start to not take everything too seriously here. <laughs> El Shadow is here as well. Welcome back. We're all getting so close. <laughs> Indeed. Maybe Ujivo just happens to have that particular type of pod armor. The pod armor that makes things interesting anyways. Anyways, random chooses Harley like for Pikachu. And you guys smell great. Hey, yeah, thank you, El Shaddai. But why are you smelling us? <laughs> are we really that fragrant? Or is it because we stink? Hmm, <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay, I haven't seen any attempt to- oh. Oh, because we're getting close. Uh, uh. That was bad. <laughs> Anyways. I never thought I'd use the uh, funny walking animation for that, but hey, whatever works. <laughs> Anyways, Juvo just did chucking grenades like there's no tomorrow. Anyways, up smash takes out Jubo's first stock. And yeah, we're still playing that very careful game of neutral right here. Yeah, it do be like that. Oh, it almost looks like Carly Elect was about to get KO'd there. But the up there takes out Carly Elect's second stop. That's what's an explosive back here. And the down smash takes Juvo off the stage, but Snake's recovery do be kind of bad enough to, for him to make it back. Juvo almost dislocated the advantage, but it was Harley who dislocated his disadvantage. Anyways, Juvo goes on to stay in the arena for a bit longer. That's Quite a lot of repeats we're getting in a, a today's stream. Uh, those C4s are deadly, indeed. <clears throat> um, you know what? I think we'll skip this song. Yeah, okay. You want to fight the snake? Yeah, I suppose that's a fair point. Must have bought. If it, welcome to the stream, and yeah. We do be kind of full at the moment. What? Oh, I guess Jubel exited. Okay. Um. I guess once everyone's ready, we'll start the next match.
And yeah, have a good rest of your day, Juvo. Forgot to say that. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh wait, I think Crapocalypse actually chose Mario this time around. Yeah? Or... But yeah, Clover Senpai with the Ness versus Crapocalypse is Mario. Should have switched to your main. Oh, well. I guess we all get those moments. Clover Senpai getting a pretty good advantage going against Crapocalypse. Almost got the PK flash, but the Crapocalypse had other plans. PK fire! And now that I actually say PK fire like that specifically, I remember this... I remember this one meme where the guy actually uses PK fire in real life. And that was probably one of the funniest things you would ever see related to Smash anyways. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, okay, aside from that video on my main channel called Duck Hunt is Cursed. Yeah, that's a funny moment as well. Oh, right back at you. Apocalypse Doobies. Kind of struggling to get the first stock, but now the fireball takes out Clover's first stock. Now it's gonna be a bit of an upward uphill battle from here. <coughs> Mainly since Clover Senpai does have a pretty good mess. Predicting the trajectory as well, just a raw PK Thunder to hit a Mario going towards center stage. Anyways, Clover Senpai goes on to stay in the arena for a bit longer, going up against El Shaddai up next. Let's see how this goes after Crapocalypse treats his Mario again. Yeah, okay. Looks like we're all good here. Anyways, we got the Ness vs. Roy on your Nova Pokemon League. Okay. Yeah. Almost looked like that PK Flash was about to hit El Shaddai there, but see. fortunately, El Shaddai did not have enough big body privileges to get hit by that PK Flash. Roy do be kind of tall though, compared to a lot of the other characters in Smash Bros. Anyways, like. Whenever you see tutorials on some of the more humanoid characters, like realistic humanoid characters, yeah, the person giving the tutorial is like, hey, this character is pretty tall. And I'm like, huh. 
Oh yeah, oh yeah, for context, see the tutorial that I saw where someone said that is it the Robin tutorial and I'm like, really? Never really think of tall, it's more like those characters with the big buff with the big body privileges like Bowser, K Rule, uh Donkey Kong, I guess. Ridley? Yeah. Almost got to the thing there, but the PK Flyer sends it El Shadowy into the offstage. Oh, that was a close one. Oh, that's unfortunate that it had to end like that. Okay. Oh, you gotta go? Alright, have a good rest of your day, Cripoclips. And the back air sends the El Shaddai into the blast zone a second time. But it almost looks like Clover was about to get some um, good PK fire stuff off of there. Four throw into the PK flash. Yeah, that does it. Clover goes on to stay in the arena for a bit longer. Going up against me up next. Not a good first game. Yeah, understandable. But... Yeah, I suppose it's good to warm up at some point. Toxic Bayo! <laughs> Alright, let's hope this person lives up to their name anyways. Because whether you're actually toxic or not, it's not always that great to lie. It's not great to lie anyways. Anyways. Uh, yeah, I forgot to tell him. Okay, now we're good. I was looking to come down there to snipe Vanessa's PK Thunder, but... Ah, well. I have no idea how I managed to hey, block the PK Flash twice those times. And I thought I would be able to hit Clover with the up special, so that's why I decided to mislodge with it. I thought I was about to eat a PK Fire there. But I ate one there, okay. Oh, that was all. I almost did it though. Um. Ah, yeah. Big body privileges. Okay. I thought I was gonna eat a downer as well, but. I guess they don't serve those until dessert or something.
Anyways, for Tilt takes out Clover's second stock. Oh gosh. I almost got hit by it three times there. There we go, finally got the wing blitz. I'm not sure what Clover was trying there. <laughs> Good fight, Tinius. Anyways, I stay in the arena for a bit longer, going up against Harley Elect at the next. Let's see how this goes. With the uh, Ridley versus Kirby. Oh wait, I can't absorb Kirby to get his powers. Right. But honestly, Kirby can uh, project. Kirby can uh, project. I uh, still pretty good. I was about to try to not snap to the ledge to catch any unsuspecting Harleys there, but... Down smash takes out Harley Lex for stuff. Yeah, Kirby has a projectile now. All right, that was a really good edge guard there. So yeah, people may say that to the solo acting moves that it will punish you really hard if you get hit by them are usually the worst moves. But at least as long as they're specials or something like that, where you could get away with using them in the air. You could probably just control some space and force people to get off of you by using those solo moves. Food for thought. But I suppose that only works on the people who are a little too scared to shield the moves as well. Anyways, let's get the Harley Sue final stock out of there. I just realized I was still on my second stock as well, so maybe I could have been a bit bolder with uh, stock there. Oh, Clover got you there. Ah uh, yeah, we do spam mark fire around here. Three, 
Welcome you ladies on to your Kellos Pokemon League of the Year. Huh, interesting maneuver. Yo, worth it! Maybe I shouldn't be too quick to, to just get back to center stage. Oh, that's a dead Roy right there. I keep on expecting the counter to come out each time I do a wing blitz, but yeah, those never really happen, I guess. Anyways, good fight. Really does tend to do pretty well against sorties, so I've heard, so yeah. Alright, it's time to meet this toxic Bayo. Got smacked, yep. Alright. Oh, wait, I am a big body after all, so... It will be pretty hard to get out of Bayonetta's combos if she manages to get some. How did I not get hit by that combo? Anyways. Okay, somehow I managed to escape all that. Maybe... He really see big body privileges are different than the others. Anyways, that's the dead bayonetta. Don't let this bayonetta out toxic you. <laughs> True, yeah. Anyways, punishing the Bayonetta for performing a uh, much time by just giving her a good amount of percent. Somehow I've not gotten hit by any major players in Bayonetta's combo game so far. Except for the moves that are meant to combo anyways. Anyways, back here takes out Tsubeo's second stock. Would have got it if the Bayo wasn't so close to the ledge. Oh, that's unfortunate. Okay. Honestly, a pretty good recovery from Bayonetta there. I definitely expected the... Uh, hey, which was to just eat a whole bunch of uh, cheese puffs right then and there.
that's not gonna KO just yet. Cause Bayo knows how to DI Ridley's Psych Special. Anyways, DI this. Alright. Anyways, good fight. I kinda... Only human DI this. True, I suppose. Yeah? Huh. Out tossed. Basically implying that I'm more toxic than Bayonetta, which honestly is really hilarious. <laughs> Anyways, going on to Light Clover Senpai up next. Ah! Big body privileges. Okay. Yeah, I honestly should have seen that coming. Oh, I ran right into that TK fire. Um... Oh, well, there's that glitch that happens with Nessusilio on Vidigar again. Okay, that's extremely safe on shield. Note to self, don't try to shield PK Flash whenever Ness is close by. Or just any projectile that has a lot of shield stun to it. Alright, good move. Oh, almost got the back air in there. I'm not even sure how that backer managed to land like that. <laughs> Anyways, the forward smash takes out to cover second stock. Back down forward air into forward tilt. I suppose that had to happen at some point. Okay. No more carelessly space pirate rushing into everything. There's the Ilya not working correctly again on Midgar. If Midgar did end up becoming a legal stage at all in Smash Ultimate's lifetime, then there's a good chance that yo yo interaction with Pledge would have been fixed, honestly. Oh, I thought I was gonna get PK fired again. Um, okay, back there? Oh gosh. Still living. Flew right into Ness's loving arms, and that'll be it for that match. Clover goes on to stay in the arena for a bit longer. Anyways, I'm gonna go use the restroom real quick.
I've returned. Man, I can't wait for that time by random chance whenever I do return and say I have returned did that the Vine Boom sound effect would just play over that or whenever it does happen. Anyways, we have a pretty close game on Fountain of Dreams. Probably like has a pretty good lead over Clover so far. Wait, what was that? <laughs> Either Harley like tried to place TNT down and didn't have the resources for that, or maybe or maybe that thing he tried to place just wouldn't spawn at all, or something like that. Anyways, that was a good anvil, but unfortunate that it had to happen like this. What? Alright, yeah, I guess Clover Senpai is it just a uh, thing there. <laughs> I... I guess it's as simple as... Okay, yeah. Thought the block would come out. Yeah, that's... That sounds pretty reasonable. Anyways, Kripalkalypse came back. Welcome back. Anyways, I was just saying what to the fact that such a... Regal sounding song was... It just played right after I said, that's so unfortunate. <laughs> Anyways, if I was a viewer in my own stream, I would probably clip that. Because of how ironic that is. Anyways, Clover goes up against El Shaddai up and up. Up next on Midgar. Also, you are aware of that uh, block glitch. Oh, so that was a block you tried to place down. I wonder what could have happened there. Like, the block actually disappeared in the Smash Bros. style puff of smoke instead of the usual puff of smoke you would... Actually, no. It didn't... Okay, it disappeared in the Smash Bros. style puff of smoke. But it didn't say outright deny you from it, it placing down the block. Because there would have been that, uh, that circle with a slash in it, if it were to happen anyways. <laughs> Some characters to do, can do that to Steve Swap. Oh, okay. So, it's not really a glitch, more like uh, an interaction that hardly ever happens. Like, Steve tries to place a block and the, the character just so happens to be moving in a way that would destroy the block, so yeah, they just do it. Anyways, for throw sends Clover off the stage. El Shaddai tried to use the forward air, but it hits an ill veil. Anyways, up smash takes out El Shaddai's second stock. I can be silent during this song, since see, I, I was the one who made this song. <laughs> the only characters I know that can 
Due to the special interaction, is ZSS and Refit found out in training mode around the beginning of the year. Yeah, like, Steve placed a block that's one block off of the ground, and while ZSS and Refit are crouching, and I guess they just raise up, and that'll do it, yeah. Anyways, uh, Up Smash actually worked correctly on Ledge this time around. And the forward tilt from El Shaddai takes out two Clovers, two second, no, uh, first tilt. Dash attack into the PK flash. Doesn't really do too much. But the back throw will. Taking out El Shaddai's final stock. Clover goes on to stay in the arena for a bit longer. Going up against me up next. Okay. Well, wait for... Well, I suppose it wouldn't hurt to wait for Harley Alec to finish choosing a character before going on with the next match. Trying to warm up still with the uh, sticks say feel foreign to me. <laughs> huh. Yeah, that's interesting. I guess you got a new controller? That's probably the only explanation to that. Anyways, onto Fountain of Dreams with the yeah, Ness vs. Ridley. Uh oh. Big body privileges. Oh, finally, the song you plays after so long. Thought Clover would have uh, been mashed out of it. But I uh, guess it's all worth it so that Clover could heal up a free 20% there. Okay, no need to worry about conserving the jump there. I suppose Ford Smash would have been so much better there. Um, okay. There we go, up smash. Takes out Clover's Super Stilk. Sus block activity. Yeah, it needs to be voted out. It may be the imposter. Almost got a grab off of that. Um, 
We're good. Okay. No longer good. We're dead, actually. Anyways. Yo, big body privileges. Thank you for the 10 month sub. Okay. Huh. Oh, Rick! Quilver <laughs> almost made it back. I don't know why I taunted in the. Oh, yeah, it's because of the Ford Air just it, it doing some major shenanigans there. Frick, the PK flash hit? Huh. Alright, with all that said, we have 15 minutes left until the end of the stream. Well, suppose it ended the stream. There is always a chance for an encore. Anyways, yeah, speaking of which, I forgot to check out those boogie woogie aphids that a friend of mine sent to me towards the beginning of the stream. Uh. Found some tiny strange bugs dancing around a leaf while hiking. Yo! You do got the schmooze! Just gonna uh, copy that link and uh, put it in the Twitch chat. Yo, Krapalkops is actually playing as Palutena this time. Actual dope. Alright, so. Anyways. Here we have the Boogie Woogie Aphids. If y'all want to check that out. Wait a minute, I just realized something. And that... That bit of realizing does take a bit of context to know. But yeah, playing the uh, basically useless part in the Parahuman series, there is a kids show called Love Bugs. Mm hmm. Interesting. And that's only in the Parahuman series. Like you probably won't find it in real life. Probably. But, yeah, during the intro sequence, yeah, they would do a little bit of a boogie woogie spell out to the name of the show and all that. Anyways, those are definitely the love bugs that you would see, like, twice in the entire series. <laughs> well, hear about twice, no, three times in, throughout the entire series. <laughs> So, yeah. The more you know. Anyways, Clover does have a pretty good advantage once again. That back throw doesn't quite KO, not from center stage at least. Back air. Clover with a quick trigger finger on the PSI magnet, just absorbing that auto reticle. They do be in the lead at the moment.
Although Cryptocalypse is attempting to do a better job at to surviving Ness's onslaught right there. Oh, exploding flame can be absorbed. That's real cool, I guess. Apocalypse is uh, pretty close to taking out Clover's uh, first stock, well, second stock. If only it weren't for that goof up with a teleport, then uh, that actually would have been the first stock taken. Anyways, Clover goes on to stay in the arena for a bit longer. Yeah. You were a little late on that one, Vine Boom, buddy. But I suppose we do take those sometimes. Anyways, Clover goes up against Mr. Man up next. With the Ness versus Random. Let's see what Random gives us. Rosalina? Hell is definitely better than Mario. Yeah. It was just a few unfortunate events to that. It caused to that last match to go better than that way. Anyways, Clover just got down smashed off the ledge. But fortunately, they made it back. Oh, unfortunate for Mr. Man. Just after setting up a successful up there with Rosalina, they, he just fell right down there. No, Luma! Oh, that's a double kill right there. Alas, Luma had the airpods in and wasn't able to hear us. I guess that's just a true testament to how good the airpods are. Just not being able to hear a big ball of energy just coming towards you. Anyways, Clover goes on to stay in the arena for a bit longer. With like at least 10 minutes left till the end of today's stream. If no one uses an encore by the time we get to 11 o'clock, then yeah, the stream will end for today. But no worries, I will be streaming tomorrow, the same time as it today. Oh yeah, we got to the Encore, okay. Stream will now end at 11.30. Tell me to play a Sith Riddler. Um, I think I'm good. Anyways. Whenever you're ready, go ahead and start the next match. Ready. Let's see what let's see if this could go. Yeah. Anyways, on to your Hollow Bastion they go. Ness vs. Captain Falcon. This is definitely looking to be a high octane fight. Ness being as floaty as he is, maybe he won't be able to keep up with the Captain Falcon, who is the second fastest runner in the game. but is also one of the slowest walkers in the game, as far as I know. 
At least I think Captain Falcon is a really slow walker back in... Well, he was one of the slowest walkers back in Melee, anyways. Pika Thunder, it doesn't face hardly like at all. Hardly like just playing a very careful game of neutral by using the neutral air on Captain Falcon. Now, whenever he starts spamming forward there, so then he would be playing a game of forward. Yeah. That was a pretty good advantage there. Just two knees in a row, taking out three clovers this second still. Though the first stalk had to be taken out at some at some point. Oh yeah, and it, if anybody starts spamming a back air, then it's just called back. You'll never guess what it's uh, spamming down air is called. It's usually just called a bad idea in most cases, since there's some down airs just aren't too bad ideal in neutral. But yeah, if you want your game to go in the same direction you're spamming that move, uh, yeah, could be called down. It's so like, some characters will have a stall and fall down there. And meanwhile others just have a really... Actually no, only Bile has a really slow down there. So it's, real, so it's actually a bad idea to play the down game with Bile. <laughs> Oh frick, I just realized that uh, both players are at one stock. Well, okay, not anymore. Harley Leck has won the game, and goes on to fight Lesers up next in the arena. Just as a reminder, the stream now ends at 11.30, not at 11. You got disconnected and then the arena is full? Yeah, it do happen like that. Quick, someone go into the spectator stand so that I could... They kick you from the arena and they have Crabocalypse go into the arena in your stead. <laughs> Think that's your first one of the day? Wow. Um, no, that. Oh, wait. That was a different Steve I was seeing winning. Never mind. Okay. Yeah. Congrats on your first win. But yeah, there was a Steve earlier by the name of Weebus402. Yeah, Weebus402, who had the. Uh, who honestly had a pretty good Steve, honestly. Anyways, welcome to the stream, Caster G. Or wait, it's probably supposed to be pronounced Cavester. Yeah, probably could be pronounced Cavester. Which. Honestly, it sounds like a dope title. Hey, what do you do for a living? I'm a cavester. Anyways, yeah, sick name. Anyways, for this match, as uh, random, random has chosen Isabel for Harley Leck. Meanwhile, El Shaddai decided not to go random, and they, they chose Dr. Mario. You really don't do anything for a living? Uh, I guess you're too young to have a job, which I guess is understandable. Yeah. 
So, yeah. Oh, frick. El Shaddai. <laughs> well. Alright. Looks like we're having a fair match here. Two low tiers battling each other. Actually, now that I think about it, Isabelle's probably more of a mid tier at this point. Like, she's able to. She's proven herself for quite a bit of, bit of time. Even managing to hold up the slingshot just for the pill to just uh, get deleted by that. Or it's meshed and see El Shaddai off the stage. Though nothing much else was done here. But the forward air, that takes out El Shaddai's final stock. Anyways, Harley Leck goes on to stay in the arena for a bit longer. Going up against me up next. I guess they could increase the uh, max amount of people in the arena to seven people tomorrow. Just gotta remember to actually do that. Or, wait, I have a better idea. So, right whenever the stream ends, I'll basically set up a private arena that has a max of seven people, and then I would just immediately shut down that arena. Foolproof plan. Nothing will go wrong here. Just gotta remember to create that arena. Meant to use a uh, plasma breath there, but yeah. Ah, just the space power tries to shoot right into the the paintbrush there. Down smash takes out Harley Alex's second uh, first stop. Uh oh. Maybe charging up that up smash would have been a lot better. Anyways, uh, up smash out of the berry takes out my second stock. Somehow managed to get the hey, good stuff there. Yeah. All right. Um. There we go. All right. Now I just need to roll behind Harley Leck and get smash attacked. Let's go! Alright. Anyways, that's a victory in my book. <laughs> but Harley Alec goes on to stay in the arena for a bit longer. Anyways, good fight.
Anyways, Harley Leck goes up against Mr. Man up next. Oh yeah, like, I would... Like, a lot of the time in situations like those where I'm down to my last stock and at a really high percent, and I just scored a KO, it, I would joke around being like, Alright, I just need to roll behind the opponent and they get forward smashed, and everything would be alright. So, yeah. Oh, frick, I forgot I have the sound effect installed in the music program. Yeah, it just goes off randomly. Maybe I should decrease the uh, max amount of time to wait before another one of the blind boom snapsacks. See what happens. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. Back throw sends Mr. Man into the blast zone. Harley like getting some pretty good Lucas combos though. was a uh, very ballsy down there. <laughs> Hopefully it's all worth it in the end. I mean, yeah, there's a pretty real possibility that Mr. Man could have lost the game because of that, but... I think the... The fact that he did it at all is more to send a message, and that may have gotten the Harley shook. Harley's pretty impressive when he on random. El Shaddai is. Wait, no, that wasn't El Shaddai. Uh, Lover Senpai already calling off the shots here. Okay, maybe they can see the future. But, yeah. Harley Leck goes on to stay in the arena for a bit longer. Hey, Crick Crickpocalypse is back! <laughs> mean in general, not just that fight? Uh, so they all say. <laughs> Anyways, let's wait for a Crickpocalypse. Alright, now we're good. That made- that read made you feel like a pro. Yeah, yeah. But it appears that... Oh, huh. I guess we got another... What? I guess we got another leaf there. Anyways, on to Town and City we go. We got Lenny's Hero versus Harley Lux Dark Pit. Seems we're already anticipating the Kifriz that could come out. They always shield though. Probably because it takes time for you to put down your shield and then to throw out your down special. That's probably how it went. Yeah. They're climbed right into the bottom blast zone. It seems Lenny does have a lot of ground to make up here. Hey, there we go. Uh-oh. Okay, good. Lenny didn't get pineappled. Um... 
Yeah, Lenny did try to do a uh, whack there. Man, it almost seems kind of crazy how the platform's on the side in the city section of the stage used to move back and forth. In competitive play, Nelly just stays st st stationary. So, yeah, that's interesting. Zoom. Looks like Lenny's going purely for the top deck stuff as far as the down special goes. Nice spike! Looks like Lenny does seem to be eating comfortably for the rest of this match. Oh, that Kafriz did get sniped out of the air with a dark pit arrow. And the back air takes out Lenny's second stock. Hey, welcome to the... Welcome to the stream, Animania. Anyways, Lenny did get Harley like there, and that'll be the end of that match. Lenny goes on to stay in the arena for a bit longer. Honestly, yeah, this, that match was pretty back and forth here. The grab lingered. Ah, uh, I guess Dark Pit was still on the end like of the grab whenever he got hit by the Kazap. Yeah, that's probably how it went then. Alright. Anyways, uh, whenever you're ready. Lenny vs. Clover Senpai. On to Battlefield we go. Both players saying here's to a good fight. And yeah, it looks like Clover's neutral is in shambles right now. If only if uh, if only Nestin to rely on his normal moves as well as his special moves. I'm actually surprised that the psych up didn't affect uh, his app there. That's what a that's real interesting, actually. But yeah, fortunate that it stock had to end that way. PK Flash almost hit. Up smash from Ness and Steel Lenny into the air, but that helps him get back to stage quicker. So rattle helps do uh, the, a lot of movement stuff. Oh yeah, I guess you can absorb snooze as an energy projectile. No one really does it, but oh, the hocus pocus just it took out all the MP there. Alright, now that was a good psych up back there. The Clover did not take the knockback that came from that. Hatchet Man gets punished by the forward throw. And yeah, it looks like Clover is definitely going to win this one. And I guess as a general reminder, you don't really need to hey, use a spell in your menu in order to exit out of the menu. You can just press the shield button to cancel out to whatever menu selection you want to do. Black! 
takes out Clover Senpai's second stuff. Although all Lenny really needs to do is roll behind Clover and get then Clover will pay forward smashing. And the forward smash, well, and the forward smash gets cancelled out by the back air, taking out to Lenny's final stock. Clover goes on to stay in the arena for a bit longer. I forgot who we're fighting against up next. Ah, up against me up next. Alright. Anyways, now we got 15 minutes left until the end of today's stream. Let's get those battles rolling. Yeah, okay. My usual catchphrase at this point of the stream is see, let's make those battles count. And I also gotta remember that I'm uh, playing as Riddley for the rest of today's stream. So yeah. I thought I would be able to take Clover out of the... Well, Clover off of the stage with the corridor train. Anyways, that's the end of Clover's first stock. Oh, no way. Alright, so the little hop that Riddley does at the start of Wing Blitz actually saved him from getting hit with the PK fire. That's just really interesting, actually. Oh no! Alright, so... The new worst feeling is getting caught with PK fire while you're in the middle of the space pirate rush. That's the worst feeling. Because whenever you yeah, get to that seed point, the PK fire just it, literally it can bust it right under Ridley, and it, yeah, Ridley's just in the whole world of the PK hell. Yay! Anyways, Blake's player Twitch takes out Clover's second stock. I suppose it had to happen at some point. And Ford Smash takes out Clover's final stock. Woohoo, I finally got that game off of him. Anyways, good fight. Anyways, I go on to fight Mr. Man up next. With a Riddley versus Random. Three, two, 
And you ladies don't do in Northern Cave we get. I have a feeling this may be a quick fight considering this is Daisy getting a gotten on random, so. But I shouldn't count too much, honestly. We both did some sort of first option right over each other. Thought I was gonna get hit with a parasol. But yeah, Mr. Man's first stock is out the park. Alright, good. Managed to survive all that. Okay. What? I thought for sure the down special would have sweet spotted there. That's a free thirty percent since the release of the space park rush into the rapid jab just does work like that. The Daisy Bomber takes out my first stop. You know, I keep, each time I keep on landing, uh, well, each time I use uh, down air anyways, it, I keep on getting the spike hit with the down air for some reason. Maybe the spike hit of down air is more forgiving than I thought it was. But uh, yeah, good fight. Anyways, going up against Crepocalypse up next. With the uh, Ridley vs. Game and Watch. Alright. This could turn out to be an interesting fight. Then again, it's been a while since I've played the Game & Watch Ridley matchup. But yeah, it looks like Game & Watch will take a whole advantage of a lot of Ridley's big body privileges. Yeah, I was kind of wondering when that bucket was uh, gonna come out. Anyways, when Blitz takes out Capocalypse's uh, first stock. Yeah, I suppose the uh, yeah, up special is uh, a lot more useful for escaping situations like that. And I have a... Yeah, that's gonna kill. <laughs> have to head out? Alright. Have a good rest of your day, Clover.
Almost got the neutral air hit there. I guess I'm in the process of using spaghetti controls or something like this. Alright, should be good. 2 1. Real behind Cripocalypse and get forward smashed. Ah. Yeah, the operation kind of failed. Almost got the reverse aerial rush back here. But yeah, understandably, Kripocalypse is having. well, trying to survive here. Lightweight against Ridley with the rage. Anyways. Oh! Got me there. Down special almost did hit. Let's not forget that. Um, uh, yeah, that's death. Okay. Really disappointing that it had to happen that way, but it did have to happen at some point. But yeah, the wing works will take out Apocalypse's final stock. Anyways, yeah, good game. Anyways, going up against Harley like up next. See how this goes. And judging from how we... Yeah, this might actually be the last match. Okay, Betstone.com <laughs> uh, Stole the words right out of my mouth, man. And it's Zelda. Okay. So we don't make a sequel to the Duck Hunt as a cruise video. <laughs> Anyways, on to Wily Castle. Yeah, this might actually be the final match. Hmm. Almost got it there. Okay. And the Wing Blitz takes out Harley Alex for stock. Actually, yeah, it would have been a lot wiser to use the up special. Because if Harley like. Because then I could react to whether Harley like is gonna be below me or above me. Or anywhere else. So. It was a uh, pretty long distance to go with the Space Pirate Rush. Alright. 
it, fair enough. Once again, I stole the words right out of my mouth. I wonder if we could have clanked back here, sir. I thought I was gonna do a back here there, but I guess changes to plans had to be made there. feeling that the uh, match may end in a few moments. Yep, away I go. And that'll be the end of the last match. Anyways, good games everybody, and I'll see y'all tomorrow at 8 o'clock a.m. US Central Time. As for now, GG's.